Okay, so this is how to make a delicious, keto-friendly, lectin-free pizza that's so greasy and tasty you're gonna love it. It's healthy for you. I've been losing weight and making these things, so I thought I would share this video and hopefully uh, help someone else too. The crust is, is great. You can pick it up like a pizza, and uh, let's begin. Grab yourself a pot and some cauliflower, like so, and we're gonna pop that open and cut off the little black things that have been sitting in my fridge for a while. So let's just chop those off because they're gross. Um, then we're gonna break this thing down. So this is gonna be part of the crust. We're trying to get away from wheat. Um, we're trying to get away from lectins. If you don't know what lectins are, they are the, it's something that's inside like the skin of a tomato. Uh, that's a poison to stop insects from chewing through. Uh, and w w when we eat enough of these lectins, like uh, even in beans, um, they sort of pile up inside of us and hurt our, our stomach, our biome in our stomach and make little holes that bacteria can break through. Um, so that's why no lectins. I can do a video, comment below if you'd like me to do a video about lectins. Uh, okay, so this is where you should use goat cheese because technically um, with cheese, uh, there's it's A1 or A2. Um, A1, I believe, is a mutation gene that's sort of a casein and it's technically a le lectin. So I didn't have any goat cheese. It's very expensive um, and we go through it a lot. So I just stuck with regular cheese. Um, but yes. Okay, so we're gonna put in, see, I had the recipe. I sort of make these things up as I go. It looks like I have two cups of cheese. Uh, and now we're gonna grab some eggs. So again, we're trying to make the crust here. Oh, my shoulder is in shot, but I am cracking open. It looks like one and two. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, so we got two eggs and we have two cups of cheese, it looks like. And again, this is for the crust. Also, the cauliflower is for the crust. You'll see. Thanks, Sos, for helping stir. I like to get my kids involved. Now, I'm gonna put some meat. It's gonna be like a cheeseburger pizza, which I enjoy. So I didn't have any, uh, you know, any meat. So I just grabbed some burgers. I defrosted them and threw them on a frying pan with some extra virgin olive oil. Um, I've usually used uh, coconut oil, coconut butter, uh, but in a pinch, I'm using olive oil, which I've heard that's it's not the greatest to use for cooking. Um, hey, look what I found. Some broccoli and some mushrooms. I throw everything on my pizza. I got a lot of mouths to feed. I have three little girls and and uh, Julie. So there's there's lots of us and we're very hungry people, especially the girls are eating as much as I am. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put some spinach and chop it up. And it's also some broccoli and I'm going to chop up the mushrooms. And we're going to make a big, tasty, greasy pizza. Um, that you can eat tons of and you're gonna be good now. Okay. Uh, okay. This is my tomato sauce It doesn't have tomatoes in it um, And I make it with carrots and beets and I'll do a separate video if you'd like me to do it It gets me away from tomatoes um, Where uh, lectins actually they bother my joints a bit uh, Okay, so we have boiled the cauliflower and now we're draining it throwing it back in the pot and we're just gonna try to get the moisture out of there because we really want sort of a, um, we don't want the crust to be too soggy. It takes forever. And then it doesn't taste that good. So we're just gonna mush it down. I use this for uh, like a faux um, mashed potatoes. Uh, I use it all the time. So you're not getting all the carbs from potatoes and you can eat as much as you want and there's little cal calories in it. So I'll throw some butter and some thyme and some garlic salt and man, it's good. Okay, so, but we're still, we're trying to dry this out for our crust. So I'm just going to keep, see all the water vapor coming off it. Bye-bye, water. Okay, so we have our ingredients here. I'm going to throw it into the meat. Oh, I just did that real quick. Um, and we are just going to keep trying to get the water out of there. Well, look what we have. Extra virgin oil uh, in there. Um, and we also have our faux tomato sauce, which I really like. Um, and we also have some coconut butter, coconut oil. At which point we are going to throw some in there because hey it's great for your brain um it's really good for you it's got mct oil in it so the more the merrier okay so this is starting to dry out but it still needs some more time cooking we've got our pizza pan yay okay we're getting close we're gonna got some wax paper parchment paper throw it down there um people always complain about how hard it is to get wax paper onto like a pizza tray but it's so easy just like chop around it with your scissors simple bimple okay and we are done there and let's throw that down and how is our oh, okay i'm gonna throw in some coconut 
uh, milk into this just to give me some more time and just really make a nice tomatoey type sauce. This is starting to dry out. We're almost there. I do have the oven pre-cooking, pre-heating. I think, it, let's see, what's it say there? Is it 400 and something? Um, I'll probably zoom in on the video so you can see what temperatures I'm using. All right, so we are gonna put one uh, cup of cauliflower. I end up using the whole thing in there. I probably might have used, no, actually, it, it was the perfect amount. So one head of cauliflower works for this, but put all the ca cauliflower in there and then stir it up. Just give and make sure the meat and everything's doing well over there. Okay, so we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna stir this all up nice and good and make our dough. Now I'm gonna grab some xanthan gum and that sort of makes things sort of sticky and hold together. Um, and it is keto friendly as well. Um, so we're gonna throw that in there just to make it more doughish, something we can work with. So we're just gonna stir that in there. And once that's all done, it'll make it really gummy. Uh, hence the name, <laughs> Santham Gum. And we're gonna add some almond flour, uh, which will also thicken it up and make it more doughish. Now the thing is we're trying to get away from gluten, which is in uh, you know whole wheat and breads and all that stuff. So that's why we're making this keto friendly crust, which is gonna be awesome. I'm, uh, I'm so glad I'm doing this video because I didn't really have a recipe. I'm just, I've been experimenting and this thing turned out amazing. So the family wants me to make this again. Uh, so we're just going to push this down into a, a dough-like uh, crust here. Let's speed this up because you know it's sort of boring. Um, so just sort of like make a uh, circular shape here and then there oh smooth it out make it look nice and then we're just gonna take our finger along the edge there you go just make a good crust on there okay so this is preheated I'm gonna set the time and it looks like 400 for 15 minutes now we're gonna throw it in, in there and you just want to uh, we'll see we'll see the color of it Everyone's oven's different, so you just have to keep an eye on it and then find out what time works for you guys. So I'm gonna throw some flaxseed meal in there and some more almond flour into the meat, the meat sauce, um, because flaxseed is great for you. And also, and this will thicken things up again and make a nice tomato paste. Uh, super healthy. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm going on a health kick right now and I've lost about 20, 24 pounds so far. Uh, just eating healthy and clean. Uh, okay, we're just gonna throw a little cream cheese in there. Now again, this would be, um, you would use your goat cheese and not this, because this technically would have the A1 protein in it, the casein, uh, which is technically a lectin, so uh, don't do this. I would throw in some more goat cheese if you wanted to get that cheesy flavor, um, but I ran out of it because the kids love eating goat cheese and it's very expensive, <laughs> but it's worth it. All right, so this is what we got. We're making just a nice pizza paste and we'll add some other stuff as well. Well, look what we have here. Some olive oil, olive olives, I mean. <laughs> I guess there's oil and water in there. Right, so we're going to, you know, just take the, just dry them out, have them sit there so we can put them on in a sec. Okay, oh, there's Emmy, She's come, she wants to help as well. Sophie, my first daughter there, I have three daughters. Um, and Sophie helped at first. Okay, let's check this. Ooh, it's looking good. It's starting to rise. And there we go. It's looking nice. You see the steam come off it? You don't want too much moisture in it. So you'll see in a bit, I sort of squish it down. Ah, there we are. We I squish it down to try to get rid of the moisture. I want it to be sort of like crusty. So I'm pushing this down to maybe squish the water out a bit. I maybe should have let the cauliflower go a little bit more and dried it out more. But see how we can, it's getting tough. So, okay, let's put it back in. Oh, there's my manly oven mitts there. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna push it down again um, because in the past I've had uh, bad experiences where there's too much moisture in it. So let's have a look at it now. See, it almost looks like a pancake. You're pretty darn close to, I've decided to just go ahead with it because the family's getting hungry. Um, but you could have cooked it a little bit more, but it ends up fantastic. So I'm putting the meat sauce on, the meat tomato sauce. Um, I have bought a pressure cooker. Oh, there the cheese is going on. And the next will be the olives. But I've bought a pressure cooker and supposedly you can like kill the lectins in the tomatoes. So uh, that I'm gonna work on on the next one. Let's throw some garlic salt. 
I'm a big garlic fan. I don't know about you guys. The family loves it. Some parsley flakes just to give it some color and, you know, make it taste pizza-ish. Um, and some more garlic powder because powder, I love it. Um, I love cheese and garlic. And we're going to throw in the dried... They're not really dried. Just took them out of the olive container. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it on top. And then we're going to cook this yet again. Throw it in there until the cheese melts and the crust gets all brown and greasy. And uh, so it looks like I'm putting it on for another 400 at 10 minutes. Uh, it's been in there for three minutes. Just taking a little look at it. Let's check the crust. Looking very crusty. Um, and ooh, there we go. Giddy up. All right. I think I'm done here. Look how good that looks. It smells delicious. It's bubbling with grease. Um, and yeah, that crust looks good. So let's just chop it up. I've let out the, uh, the bat signal to the family. So they're starting to, uh, show up in the kitchen. Oh, there's one of them. And we're just going to cut up the pieces and then let's check this delicious crust. Um, we're making a delicious keto cheeseburger, lectin free pizza, but you have to put the goat cheese in it. Okay. Let's have a look. It almost has a bit of a quiche type feel to it, but I, I just stack stuff on my pizzas. That's just me. The crust is nice and tough. There we go. I like it. You can put whatever you want on it, but like with pepperonis and stuff, I don't know how healthy those are. Um, I like healthy ingredients, so I just throw everything on it. Um, and I just keep experimenting. Yeah, it's kind of got like a quiche thing. Let's see how tough that is. So you can hold it like a pizza. And we are going to feed this to the family. I'm going to have a bite of this delicious thing. I actually want to now make another one of those. I think I would just cook the cauliflower a little bit more, dry it out a bit more. But look at this thing. Wow. I should make a Hawaiian one. I know everyone hates Hawaiian, but I love it. Sweet and salty. Oh, baby. There you go. Want a bite? <laughs> this is so good. I'm going to put a little more garlic salt on there because I love garlic and cheese. So that's just me. That's on me. And let's have another bite. Look at that. It looks, a, yeah, it looks, it's hard as could be. There's Sophie. She's very happy. Yep. Yeah. And she's going to have a little bite there. And what does she think? Am I going to get a thumbs up? Come on. Yay. Okay, good. Okay. So the family's happy, which makes me happy. And it's super delicious and filling. Look at all those toppings. OMG. No lectins, except for the cheese, and no keto. Like, it's keto-friendly. It's so There's low carbs because there's no bread. There's no dough. There's no... It's uh, it's greasy and good. Do you guys have any favorite keto or lectin-free recipes? Comment below. Tell me about them. I'd love to try them out, and maybe I'll do a video about one of them. Great. Thanks so much. Please subscribe, like, and hit that bell. Ding, ding. And I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Bye.